Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to look at Study in Sorcery. Study in Sorcery is designed by Chris Glenn and is published by Weird Giraffe Games. Study in Sorcery, you're a student for the dark arts and you're trying to gain the most credits by the end of the game. The person with the most credits will win. Will you be able to dig into the earth enough to pull out the uh, ingredients you need to complete your different uh, subjects or will you fall flat? This game here is going to, like I said, for one to four players, there's a solo mode and there's also sort of like a little mini campaign sort of mode in the game itself. We're going to mainly go over just how to play the game itself. So let's go ahead down to the table here. Uh, I'm going to show you how the game plays and then we're going to come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so this is Study and Sorceries. In Study and Sorcery, I just want to point out real quick that there is a solo and a mission mode. Those are both really fun, but I'm gonna let you discover that on your own. I'm not gonna go over it in this video, just know that they're there and they're cool. You need to know how to play the game in general anyway uh, before you get into those. So we're gonna just go over that today, just how to play the game in general, the multiplayer version. So just a little flavor text for the game here. It's your final semester at the Academy of Dark Arts, and it's time to finish your degree. Earn enough credits to graduate by finishing your master thesis and completing projects in alchemy, sorcery, reanimation, and more. Whoever completes the most impressive projects will be named first in class and get this really cool certificate showing that they won. Time is precious, so make the most of it while you still can. In this game, you're going to be gathering materials, which will be used to either buy new projects or complete your current projects. Once completed, projects will give you either instant or ongoing benefits in addition to the credits towards your degree. This game is going to be played over four semesters here, and each of these semesters is going to be broken down into the four phases of the moon. We're going to show you how to set up the game first. To set up the game, you're going to shuffle up this deck here of 100. You're going to tell by the banner here, 100 uh, levels. Then you have the 200 level. You shuffle up that little deck right here of the 200 level. Then you're going to shuffle up the deck of the 300 level, and you're going to place these on top here. You'll go ahead and place out the moon phases one, and you'll put the first token here on the first quarter moon, and then you'll place out the semester one and put it on the first semester. You will go ahead and place out these modifier tokens, plus and minus, available for every player. You will want to put out this little stack of vial cards and a little stack of candles. These are the resources that you can get at any time during the game. You'll want to place out, according to the semester on, so two rows of, um, two columns of two, uh, for 100s and one column here of 200s. You'll want to shuffle up this graveyard deck and place out three piles of two cards. If each player is going to collect a turn uh, uh, reference card. So they'll also get a five money research grant that they can use to purchase stuff. They'll get two thesis cards and they'll get two level 100 cards. They will also get four tokens in their color. Now, when you get the two 100s, you're going to look at these and pick one. I'm going to pick the one with the snake here, uh, foreshadowing. I'm going to show you why in a second. And place the other one back on the bottom. Then you're going to look at your thesis cards and pick one of them. I'm going to pick the one here that says complete four projects that require snakes. Uh, complete no more than one 100, one 100 level project is uh, not, not really up my alley. I don't want to really do that. Also note that uh, if you want to make the first game simpler, you can not have the thesis cards in at all and just play the game without them, or you can just remove the seven credit ones uh, to make it simpler. So you can do that to uh, have like a more of an introductory game. That is the setup. You're going to pick, pick a first player and they're going to get this really cool quill thing, place it by them, and you're ready for that player to take their turn. All right, now for gameplay. For gameplay, uh, Studies in Sorcery is played over four one-month semesters, and each semester having four weeks for a total of 16 weeks. Each week consists of four steps. You have the action, you have the commit, you have complete product uh, projects, and the advanced mo moon, the advanced the moon. So that's going to be advancing up there. So that's going to show your four weeks. So at the end of the four weeks, you're going to move on to the next semester. Now the first step, which is going to be your action step, you can do one of the following things. You can cram, you can uh, 
do a project action, you can dig and you can buy. So if you cram, you may commit up to two materials to uh, your projects. And these projects are going to require materials here. And I'm going to do a little uh, cheating here. So you're going to get a hand of cards eventually here. You have this in your hand to start. Um, but you can dig for these and you'll get these cards here and they have the different symbols on it. Some of them have multiple symbols, but when you place them on here, so you commit them to your project, only one of the multiple symbols is going to count. Some of them have detriments that you're going to get negative modifiers and stuff for if you use them, but if you don't use them, so if I use this bone, I won't get the negative modifier when I finish the project. But if I use the skull, ribs, or, or hand, I will. So for the crams, the easy one, you can just uh, take up to two cards from your hand and commit them to the project. Uh, if you complete the project, it's completed and it flips over. And this is now your permanent ability in here. This shows that there's an action symbol on here. We're going to get that to that in a second. That's one of the things you can do. That's next, project action. So if I have a completed project and I have this little symbol on here, I can do this as my action. So this says draw six cards, keep four of them, uh, keep four, then add the remaining two to any piles. So any of these piles. So I draw six from there keep um, four and then put two in any of these piles. So all different ones of these uh, that you complete will give you different actions and you can do that as one of your actions for your turn. The other action you can do is dig and when you dig you're going to look at the first pile here. So I'm going to look at the first pile and I'm going to see the materials here and I'm, I might not want this so I can pass and if I pass I'll place another card on top of this and I'll look at this pile and say, yeah, I don't want rings. I don't know why I keep getting rings here, so I'm going to pass on that. Then I'll look at this. I need a mushroom and a ring. Oh my gosh, I don't need this. So let's say we pass on all of them. What happens? I would first put one on here, but then I can do one of two things. I can take the top card of the graveyard deck, or I can take um, one of the candle or vial stocks here. So I didn't like any of these, so I will take the top card and take my luck and that did pay off because I did get a bone. So I wanted that bone. So that's good. So that's dig. Uh, the last thing you can do uh, as an action, you have to pick one of these, is going to be buy. So I have five money here. I can buy stuff. So I could buy uh, one of these up here, or sorry, one of these in here, or I can buy a vial and a candle or a candle. When you buy, you must uh, discard material cards from your hand with a total value equal to higher than the total price of the cards you wish to buy. Place any bought project uh, cards face up in front of you, any bought stock material candles into your hand, then uh, restock the market by replacing any empty spots. So if I wanted to buy something, I would probably discard this one for one dollar, but I don't. And this five dollar one once this is um, actually used it's going to go back out of the game uh, and I don't really know that there's anything out here that I want to spend my five dollar on uh, but keep in mind there's no limit to the number of projects that can be in front of you and they don't they're not detrimental to you at the end of the game uh, research grants are uh, returned to the box like I said if you uh, use them now to clarify with this five dollar money one I, I don't spend two dollar worth of candle and I lose it I could do two two and one and I have five and I can pay for those so that's fine I can buy multiple cards so keep that in mind I'm not just losing my five dollar value one so you may want to get a bunch of resources or a couple more cards or whatnot maybe I do want to pick up this snake card so if I want to pick up a snake card for uh, two money then I might need to also pick up a candle for two money and because I don't want to lose anything I might just pick up this claw here too and then I would replace those. All right, so and everyone's going to take those actions in turn order. I'm just going to place these back here for right now, just clear up the spots here. Everyone's going to finish their actions. Once everyone's finished their actions, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the commit step. Um, so in the commit step, you can uh, commit uh, material cards to a project and place it under the card so that the project icon is showing. You may commit up to two cards across all of your projects for this step. If you complete any of these projects, you'll discard the, um, so I could put for here, I can uh, go ahead and commit my bone there and have that um, ready to go to complete in the future. Uh, 
once you completed your uh, the commit step, you move on to the um, next step. So one thing I want to point out though is if I did have all these in here, like I said, I could flip this over. Now this would be a permanent card completed. I would gain uh, credits for it in this case too. Uh, these would be discarded and um, that would be finished. All right, so we have the commit step. In the commit step, you can commit some of your cards to your project. So in this case, I could uh, commit a bone. So now I have, this has multiple in here, but I only can count one. I'm counting this bone here because I need a bone, bone, and a snake. So that's it. You can commit up to two of them to all your projects. So you have a limit of two cards you can commit over all of your projects. Once you've committed those, you're done. Everyone finishes in turn order. Then we're gonna go to complete project step. If a project has materials committed to it that match the number and type needed to complete it, flip it over. Uh, check all grave cards that were committed uh, to the project for extra credit for demerits on here or cre extra credits. Here I have, if I would have had any of these, I would have had demerits. So if I flip this over because I completed it and I used one of these that actually wouldn't have, but if I used any of these, then I would put a demerit on here and it would reduce the amount of credits that I would get for completing it. So in this case, I would have got two credits. But, um, so if I complete that, I flip it over, all the graveyard cards go into the graveyard discard, which I just, so you know, I didn't have enough to complete it. I'm just showing you what that would happen. Uh, then I would have those credits available at the end of the game for me and now have a new action available to me in future rounds. So after that's all been completed, uh, you're gonna advance the moon one step so I'll go ahead and advance this moon one step. So now we're at the full moon. And we're gonna continue back through that loop. So everyone's gonna be able to complete an action. We're gonna go through all those steps and we're gonna keep doing this until we're at the fourth moon. Once we hit the fourth moon, we're gonna reset this back up. We're gonna move these up and then we're gonna reset the board a little bit. So basically we're gonna discard the two on the far left, we'll move these down and we'll place the new cards out. So two 200s would go here. So we'll continue this on and keep on going until the fourth semester ends. And at that point, the person with the most points wins. All right, so for final scoring, it's pretty simple. Basically, you're gonna look at your thesis, see if you finished it, that'll give you points. All of your um, completed uh, projects will give you points here. Any demerits on completed projects or uh, cre extra credits on any completed products will, projects will give you those. Any uncompleted projects don't count. And uh, credits and demerits on uncompleted projects also don't count. So you're going to also add up your cards in your hand. So all the cards in your hand, you're going to look at the little value here. And for every $8 worth of uh, materials you have is also going to be worth one credit. The person with the most credits at the end of the game is going to win. If there's a tie, whoever has the largest total of values of grave cards, which are these guys right here, is going to win. If there's still a tie, the player who howls at the moon with the most werewolf authenticity is the winner. This is voted on by all other players. So there is no real ties in this game unless you don't want to howl like a wolf and one of them does, then yeah, I guess they would still win. But uh, anyway, uh, that is study in sorceries. Let's go ahead back up to the table here and I will give you my final thoughts on the game. Okay, so I really liked Study and Sorcery. I think Study and Sorcery is a pretty solid game here. I liked all the component quality and it's great. I like the wood uh, chunky pieces for the turn markers and the first player marker component quality, great. Gameplay, a lot of strategy in this game of when you're gonna dig, are you going to let other people dig ahead of you and you're gonna take some of those stacks that grow during the game there and uh, just hope to either get the, uh, uh, the symbols you want or use those to purchase things, purchase more projects to get. Uh, or you watch out to see what project people are picking up and maybe try to try to prevent them from being able to complete their thesis if you can figure out what they're going for because you definitely don't want someone to complete a seven credit thesis. That's a lot of points at the end of the game. And you're also going to be on the lookout for uh, picking up those projects to complete your thesis. So you may want to jump on those before you actually even gain the materials that you need to continue on. Also, completing those projects earlier that give you those actions is really cool. So not only are you looking at the project to complete your thesis, but you're also looking at projects that have really cool actions for it or ongoing effects throughout the game that help you out. So you may want to rush to complete those just so you get the benefits uh, for the longest period of time 
time during the game. Lots of really cool thoughts in this game. Lot, thoughts, uh, lots of really cool strategies, actually, sorry, in this game that I like a lot. Uh, the solo game was okay. I'm not really a solo gamer, so do keep that in mind. So it doesn't mean the solo version of this game is, is bad or anything. I had fun with it. I just, I'm just not really into solo games in general. So do keep that in mind. And the campaign mode on this thing was okay. Um, I liked it. Or the mission mode is really what it's called. Uh, it was fine. Uh, I really, really love the multiplayer mode though. I think that's where the game shines and I think it plays best at the four player count. It does play good at two and three, but I really, really liked it with we liked it with all four players. I thought the game went really smoothly and I loved all the interaction that I had with all the other players there, what, watching, trying what, what they get. Having that graveyard build up a little bit more was really cool too. Overall, solid game. I think that I wouldn't play the basic game without the thesis cards. Uh, maybe remove this uh, seven uh, credit thesis cards just to make the game easier for people who have never played it before and then put them in. But overall, you know, really solid game. I really like it a lot. If you're looking for a lighter uh, set collection style game, I would highly recommend uh, checking out Studies in Sorcery. Really solid game. And that's my thoughts on it. Thank you for watching.